Hello Lava friends, this week Lava 9.31 was released and it comes with a lot of new features. So let's don't waste any more time, let's check it out together. First, there is a new accept method when faking the bus system. Currently, when you fake the bus system, there is no job that will be run. And that's mostly exactly what you want to. But sometimes maybe there's one job that should run. And you can now do this by using the accept method on the faked bus. And this not only works for the bus system, this also works for the event system in Lava. You can use the accept method here as well. And also for the queue system. Thank you, Matthias. Then there is a new addition to Laval factories where you can pass a model and then this will be used instead of nested factories. Let me show you. So we are here inside a test where we create a post object through the post factory. And then we're going to make sure that we see one user in the database. And we get this one user because our post belongs to a user and inside our factory we are creating a new user in order to get the ID. And this test is currently passing. But what about, let's say we already have a given user which we want to use. Now this will be tricky. Also, we're going to end up now with two users in the database. And the test will tell us that. So what we can do now in level 9.31 is we can say we want to recycle the given user. And what this does is it now overrides the user from the factory and now we also only got one user inside the database. So this means we don't create a new user here like we have defined it because we are recycling the user object which we have provided here. Pretty cool, right? Thank you, Chess. Also, Eloquent received a new update and it's now way easier than before to use UUIDs or ULIDs as primary keys for your models. So here we have a little example where we create a new post and then we're just making sure that we get back the ID of one, which is just the primary key currently, which is an integer. And this test works because we get back one. Okay, but now you maybe want to use UUIDs or ULIDs. And this now has become way easier. So first we have to bring in the has UUIDs or use ULIDs trade. And then inside our test, if we now run it again, we already see an issue because now when we try to create a new post, it will already try to create it with a UUID. Okay, but we are not done yet. We also have to bring in now a new field. UUID is the type inside our post migration. And if we now run the test, we should see a different error and we do yeah now we're trying to expect that we get one back but actually now we're using already a uuid thank you dries another interesting new feature in level is the request lifecycle duration handler so what we have here is a little demo application and when we refresh the page you will see that this application is a little bit slow and in this case, it's mostly because inside our controller I'm using sleep here, but this also could be about that the application is just slow or the request takes too long. So what we can do now here is inside our service provider, we can define what should happen if one of our requests takes too long. So there's this method now, when request lifecycle is longer than, pretty funny name, but very readable. And here we provide an interval like two seconds here, and then a closure where we can say what we want to do in that case. In our case, we're using Ray to show a specific message here. And if we try this now out and refresh the page again, you will see that we see this entry now in Ray. And yeah, this is now a good way to interact with a request lifecycle that takes too long. And this is how you can deal with it. Similar to this next to the HTTP, request lifecycle, we can also do this for a console lifecycle. And now we have a different method called when comment lifecycle is longer than, but the rest works exactly the same. Thank you, Tim. Tim also added a new way to update a model without touching the timestamps, which was pretty difficult before that. So we are here inside a test, we are creating a new post object and we are setting updated at to null. 
Then on the React part, we're going to update our post and set the title to a new title. And then at the end, we want to make sure that updated ad is still null. But this is kind of tricky because if we run the test, you will see that this will fail. And that's because level updates the timestamps of a model by default. So if you don't want to do this, this was quite tricky before. But now there's a new way how we can deal with that. So what we can do is now we can use a new static method without timestamps on our model. And now as a parameter, we're going to provide a closure here. And this is where we now perform the same update as before. And now this test will work and it does because now we don't update the updated ad field anymore because of this new static without timestamps method. Thank you, Tim. Laravel already received an update where when you don't have a SQLite database and you try to run Artisan Migrate, it will prompt you to create this database. Now this also works for MySQL connections. So this is pretty simple to demonstrate. We are here inside an application. If we try to run PHP Artisan Migrate, it will tell us that our database does not exist yet. Do you want to create it? And yes, we want to do this. And now Laravel can help us with this as well, which was only possible before with a SQLite connection. Thank you again, Tim. And last, Taylor Otwell introduced Laravel Bootcamp during his Laracon online talk last week. First and most important of all, there is a dark mode. So the bootcamp is now a new guide which will help you and walk you through building a modern Laravel application from scratch. And on the way, you will not only learn Laravel, but also front-end tooling like Vue or React. And you will also be digging into Inertia.js or Tailwind CSS. So I believe this is now a great counterpart to the official documentation, because if you just want to start with a new application, here is a good starting point. So please check it out, the new Laravel Bootcamp. Thank you, Taylor and Chess. So these were the addition from this week's release. Thank you again to the Laravel core team and to all the contributors. And for you, have fun with all those new features and we're going to see us next week. Bye.